just letting them walk through open borders oh all of this is i mean every part of this is just straight up lie okay every part of this detailing new evidence about donald trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election it's part of special counsel jack smith's case for why the former president is not immune from prosecution senior national correspondent terry moran has the details good morning terry Good morning, George. This is an extraordinary move by special counsel Jack Smith. His sweeping new brief is essentially a roadmap of the case he has built against Trump over the past two years, laying out the evidence and unsealed just 34 days before the 2024 election. This morning, the explosive 165-page filing by special counsel Jack Smith loaded with new evidence aimed at bolstering Smith's case that when the defendant lost the 2020 election, he resorted to crimes to stay in office. The sweeping legal brief comes as a response to the Supreme Court's decision in June that presidents and former presidents are immune from prosecution for most official acts, which was a major legal victory for Trump at the time. Do you believe the Democratic Party can change? You don't take the other party seriously, so you must believe salvation lies in reform, but I just highly doubt that Dems are ever going to change their ways. No, I don't think the Dems are going to change their ways. But I also understand how the the... American uh, elections work and I, I just know that that's not how things work like there is no third party solution here. Um, you got to work within uh, the the boundaries that are set before you if they are unyielding there's not much you there's not much else you can do you know sorry to burst your bubble on that but Hasanabi seven months the fact ago that there are people out there who are taking the time out of their day to go to an uncontested primary to vote uncommitted is very important a 10% would be a massive, in my opinion, victory for the uncommitted campaign, especially because of like when it got started. It wasn't like it is it is relatively new. And on top of that, it came in a situation where, uh, you know, if you're actually uncommitted, you just don't vote. I think people should 100% do it. And that's an important message to send. But we should be aware of what the baseline we're working off here. Trump has created a very intense loyalty towards them politicians among the kinds of voters who show up to this. Important thing to remember here, if the voter is if the vote is under 10%, people will say Biden did better than Obama to hype him up. That is not a good comparison the constituency of ancestral dems who went out of their way to vote against obama in 2012 does not exist now new york times reporting 10 percent uncommitted biden's at 85 percent marianne williams and d phillips at uh, 2.5 and 2.2 percent 10 percent of the vote is uncommitted according to new york times this early it's only five percent of the votes coming in right now folks Amen. why do people talk about trump's voter loyalty when he only has 60 percent of the republican vote people don't want either candidate if this is your expectation my friend you are in for a major surprise I'm literally lighter. I just don't have a beard, dummy. I'm skinnier than I, I was there. It's come general election. Donald Trump's Republican base of support is infinitely more loyal and also infinitely larger, Um, I guess, percentage-wise. Not larger than Joe Biden's loyal base of support, maybe even in totality, but definitely percentage-wise. Donald Trump, throughout his entire tumultuous career has rarely ever dipped below 90% of approval rating in the Republican Party. This is a fact that I used to show to liberals all the time, and it blew their minds when I would bring this up. I'd be like, dude, you think, do you think Donald Trump's approval ratings are low? That's fine. That makes sense. A lot of Democrats hate him. But look at his approval rating in the party. It's barely below 90% in the Republican Party. Joe Brandon's approval rating currently is significantly lower than that in his own party. So that's something to remember. That means there's not a lot of motivation even amongst... <sighs> Party loyalist for Joseph Robinette Brandon. This will lead to depressive voter turnout. This would be for District 9. You wear makeup on camera? No. Anyway, let's get back to Donald Trump. Let's get back to Donald Trump's uh, court filings detailing new accusations about Donald Trump's alleged attempt to overthrow the 2020 vote. But in this new filing, special counsel Smith argues that Trump's actions to overturn the 2020 election were not the official acts of a president, but the illegal deeds of a losing candidate, one who knew he lost and was told so repeatedly. Among the new evidence, prosecutors say a witness will testify that Trump mocked his own election lawyer's false claims about voter fraud, calling them crazy, even as he, quote, adopted and amplified them. Smith also argues that Trump was directly responsible for the tinderbox that he purposely ignited on January 6th, knowing he had only one last hope to prevent Biden's certification as president, the large and angry crowd standing in front of him. We fight. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. This filing reveals that prosecutors have obtained evidence from Trump's personal phone, data showing that Trump had his Twitter account open and active for most of the afternoon, 
while the Capitol was being stormed by his supporters and while Fox News played on the TV in the dining room off the Oval Office. In the middle of it all, Trump tweeting that his vice president, Mike Pence, did not have the courage to do what should have been done to protect our country and our Constitution. Smith argues in his brief that that tweet wasn't an official presidential act sent to address a matter of public concern and ease unrest. It was the message of an angry candidate upon the realization that he would lose power. According to the special counsel's filing, shortly after Vice President Mike Pence was whisked to a secure location by the Secret Service, Trump was informed by a White House staffer who hoped, quote, the defendant would take action to ensure Pence's safety. Instead, Trump, quote, looked at him and said only, so what? <laughs> Donald uh, He was very mad about the Jack Smith filing. Uh, he called it pure election interference. This is lawfare. <clears throat> Let's get right into it. Obviously, one of the major points that you've been making in your campaign is America's largest deportation effort ever. Now, we know that the government doesn't know where a million or millions of migrants are. We know some of these migrants in our country are protected under due process with the notice to appear. Yep. So how would you remove them? And how would you, as you say, use the National Guard in doing so? Yeah, you're going to get local law enforcement. They know them very well. They know their names. They know their middle names. They know everything about them. The local police and the local officers and all local law enforcement in their community, they know everybody. They know the good ones, the bad ones. They know everything about them. And they're going to get them, and they're going to get them out. We have murderers in our country. We have. Uh, drug dealers in our country. If you look at what Venezuela has sent, but it's not just South America, it's all over the world. They're coming in from Africa, they're coming in from the Congo, they're coming in from uh, all parts of, of uh, South America, but you know what? Less South America than people think. We have people coming in from the Middle East at numbers we've never seen. They're coming in from Asia, and it's not sustainable by us or by any country, and many of these people are up for murder. You know, they took out 13,099, 13,099 people were released. The other day, it was just released as information, I guess from Border Patrol. I don't know who did it. Nobody knows who did it, but the official stats, it was never released before. Over 13,000 murderers, many of them with multiple murders, and they're now in our country. We have the drug dealers, the biggest drug dealers. We have terrorists, we have everybody. Like we're a dumping ground, they have to be removed. It's not sustainable by anybody. We're going to be working with the local police and local law enforcement. They know everything. They know things that nobody would even think about knowing, but we're going to let them do their job because, you know, they have not been allowed to do their job. And you have local communities right now all over this country that are petrified before the people even come in. And they're coming in. They're all coming in. They're petrified. And I can say what Kamala and Joe Biden have done to this country. There's never been anything done so bad by a president or by a vice president. She was the border czar, whether she likes it or not, and she was in charge of the border. There's never been anything like it. I had the best numbers in history. They have the worst numbers ever for any country, not just here, for any country. She was horrible. She's trying to make excuses now, but you can't. The damage has been done. You can't make excuses. We have to get the murderers, the drug deals, we have to get them out of our country. Now, speaking of the safety of our country, we have seen the Mexican cartel and we have seen smugglers. Bro, they love AI art, huh? Your apartment building under Harris, this is what they're showing in the... This is what they're showing at the Trump rally in Michigan right now. This is the stuff that we don't get to see. That's crazy. Please cover Asheville, dude, please. I did. I did. I'm an Asheville native and we are not getting news coverage from the media. Please cover Asheville and WNC. I have targeting American law enforcement with weapons and yeah. with their tactics right now. For, for example, I just reported on four RPGs and eight IEDs found in a Mexican scout site on the other side of the border in the Tucson sector. And then today we're talking about the Mexican cartels using drone jammers to intercept our drone uh, capabilities and our surveillance technology. So how do you counter that? How do you keep American law enforcement safe and our border patrol safe? And how do you keep the weapons out of the hands of the cartel? We need a military operation. I mean, what's happening, what you're just telling me, we need a military operation. These people have become military. They're very rich. They have a lot of money. They're very, among the richest people probably in the world. They're very rich and they're very evil. And uh, people are dying at levels that nobody's ever seen from fentanyl, from fentanyl poisoning. And it comes through the border, comes from China and through the border. 
and we're going to get it stopped. And whatever you need, if it's going to be military in addition to Texas, which has really done a good job, with the best of the jobs, but uh, you take a look at Arizona, it's open, it's an open sieve. You take a look at other places, I'm going to help New Mexico. New Mexico wants to do it and they can't seem to do it because the Democrat politicians don't do it. And we're going to win New Mexico because of it. You know, you've seen the numbers. So uh, we're going to have to get in uh, some military action. And we're going to take, if we need military, look, they're killing 300,000 people a year. I think it's more than that. You know, they always say 100, 102. It's over 300,000 people are being what? killed from fentanyl and drugs. Dude, this is why I think it's like extra crazy that the Democrats don't consistently use this as a counter. Like, this man is just straight up running with this lie that undocumented migrants are responsible for fentanyl deaths. When the, when the actual reality of the matter is, fentanyl is being trafficked by American citizens into the country. Like, he just doesn't give a sh He does not care when people die from fentanyl overdoses. Which, by the way, another thing that the Biden administration did successfully was greatly reduce the number of fentanyl deaths for the first time. So it's, it's shocking that they don't... Like, they have such a massive upper hand here, both by simply repeating the truth about who is trafficking the fentanyl, and then by pointing to something that they've done that is a positive trend and yet they don't do it it boggles the mind it doesn't make any f sense i don't know the dems have good orders that come over the border we're going to do something about it is it 0.02 percent of fentanyl found is from illegal crossings or is it 0.02 percent of the undocumented it's 0.02 percent of undocumented are found with fentanyl i think it's like literally 10 percent of undocumented migrants that are apprehended at, uh, at border crossings that actually are trafficking drugs or are caught with any drugs whatsoever it's 90 percent that are apprehended that are american citizens yeah that's like having a big war that's not like having a little war you go to war you don't lose that many people in the civil war we lost six hundred thousand people we're losing three hundred thousand people a year we're not gonna we're not gonna stand for it now, when it comes to the situation in Washington, D.C. today, I'd be negligent as a reporter if I didn't ask you about this, Mr. President. Obviously, we know that special... Yeah, 0.02% of people crossing illegally possess fentanyl. 0.02%. The fact that Donald Trump is, like, claiming that undocumented migrants are responsible for every fentanyl death in this country is so psychotic, dude. You just hate undocumented migrants. That's it. That's the only reason why you're pointing to them as the major responsible party for this. It is so f frustrating. And the fact that the Democrats are not consistently going, what the f are you saying? Dog? And instead leaning on the, the idea by also presenting their own right wing border bill themselves is so stupid. Oh my God. Special counsel Jack Smith had. And when the concentration camps get built, we'll say, how did we get here? How did we get here? This is shocking. What a shocking turn of events. Who could have foreseen this? Filed court documents calling your actions in the aftermath of the 2020 election, quote, a private criminal effort. Can you respond to that? Yeah, he's a deranged person. I call him deranged Jack Smith. He just lost the big documents case. That was the biggest of them all. They said the documents case. And they said that was the toughest of them all. Let me tell you, we just won it. And it was won strongly and completely, and it was a total victory in Florida. And he is a person who is trying, and, and he works for Kamala, and he works for Joe. This was a weaponization of... Before people say, oh, well, his deranged supporters will say, who cares? We don't believe the numbers. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're not trying to convince his supporters. You're trying to tell the truth to your supporters and those in the margins how do you not get this when you when you don't launch a counter and instead concede on the right-wing framing that is not even born out of real data but just right-wing hysteria all you're doing is teaching your followers all you're doing is teaching your followers that the republicans are correct on the issue all you're doing is telling independents that the republicans are correct on this issue who are they going to believe at the end of the day slowly but surely you're pushing your base of support right 
for no particular reason. Of government, and that's why it was released 30 days before the election. And it's nothing new in there, by the way, nothing new. They rigged the election. I didn't rig the election. They rigged the election. What they do is they rig the election and then they go around getting people and, and persecuting people and prosecuting people that did nothing wrong. They rig the election. These are crooked people. Deranged Jack Smith is a prosecutor who was put there in order to screw up the election for the Republican Party. The people know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. And it's not going to happen. They should have never allowed the information to be to come before the public. But they did that because they want to hurt you in, with the election. Now, so far, and you know we've had great victories, but so far what has happened is if you take a look at what they've done, the public doesn't buy it, and my poll numbers have gone up instead of down. It's pure election interference to get an incompetent person like Kamala. She's grossly incompetent. She's more incompetent than Biden to get these people elected. And the voters, they get it. They've read it. They get it. And it's already come out. Every single channel is calling it election interference. Ready? They rigged the election. The election was rigged. I didn't rig it. They did. Now, you talk about voters, and obviously that's that's the biggest part right now, right? Getting <clears throat> these voters. You're going back to Butler, Pennsylvania. Yeah. J uh, July 13th, obviously, a gunman tried to take your life, Mr. President. Going back there this weekend, what kind of feelings, emotions... The number that needs to be checked isn't the, what percentage of immigrants smuggle fan. It is what percentage of fan is from immigrants. Do you think that the 0.02% of undocumented migrants that are apprehended at the border crossings with fentanyl are responsible for 90%? Like, you think it's the one undocumented migrant that's, like, bringing in all the fent? Is that what you think, actually? Like, is that how you think numbers work? 88% of all fentanyl smuggled across the border is smuggled by American citizens and you think like two migrants actually brought in tens of thousands of kilos? That's what you think? Two undocumented migrants are responsible for all of it. That's a genuinely... You guys understand this is the problem, okay? When people who have reactionary framing on these issues are met with the reality they have to literally get to QAnon style conspiracies. Like they have to deny basic math. They have to deny how a normal uh, supply chain and how that would normally work, like how logistics would work. They have to hallucinate an alternative reality. It's that simple. When you are on the side of the truth, if you were on the side of the truth in this matter, Democrats are not, it would be that easy to disparage right-wing framing it would be that easy to just be like what are you even saying and yet they don't even do that mexicans are hard workers 0.02 percent is more capable than supplying 90 percent of the fent lamau yeah does that elicit and are you worried about safety and security concerns here this weekend well i'm always worried i think that the white house isn't treating us very good i get crowds that are 10 times bigger than anybody else 20 times bigger than anybody else and we're entitled to security. The White House makes it very difficult. We had something in Wisconsin last week. We would have had 60,000 people, but they couldn't provide us with the security. So we, had, we went from 60,000 people to a much smaller effort. And we had 40 or 50,000 people standing outside trying to, wanting to get into a little auditorium. Uh, no, it's uh, very unfair the way we've been treated. And they, we, they have treated us uh, pretty unfairly, I think. And we have to get better security. Uh, and it's really being led more so by the White House than anybody else. I mean, I have a lot of respect for Secret Service. I think they're doing a good job. But they're only allowed to do what, what the White House is letting them do. Now, I have to tell you that recently, and it was very interesting, they just approved more money for the Secret Service. And it was unanimous. It's the first unanimous vote I can remember in Congress. The Democrats voted for it, too. So they want to see safety. Everybody wants to see safety. I'm going back to Butler because I feel I have an obligation to go back to Butler. We never finished what we were supposed to do. And I said that, I said that day when I was shot, I said, we're coming back. We're going to come back. And I'm fulfilling a promise. I'm fulfilling really an obligation. Can I take you back to the border really quick? Is that yeah, okay? Sure, yeah. Talking about safety, we've seen a record number of terrorists come across the border. Yeah. People with flags on the terrorist watch list. Southern Terror. border, northern border, it's happening. Uh, how do you prevent 
them from coming in, from stepping on U.S. soil. You know, you don't have a crystal ball. Some of these people that are let in, they're vetted. That, that commit crimes later. How do you prevent them from even getting here in the first place? They're vetted and they're criminals and we're letting people in without any vetting. They're not even vetting. They're not even asking who these people are, where they're from, what country. They're just letting them walk through open borders. What you do is... Oh, all of this is... I mean, every part of this is a straight up lie. Okay? Every part of this. If Kamala Harris... Which, by the way, the application that they're talking about for TPS filings is processed by the the Department of Homeland Security and Customs and Border Patrol, which means that like Customs and Border Patrol is in the tank for Kamala Harris, okay, or Joe Biden. The application he's talking about, the phone application, existed under the Trump administration. It was actually put into implementation under the Trump administration and that the Harris and Biden administration actually uh, continued to use it. Donald Trump himself also, uh, you know, extended TPS for Venezuelans specifically and even Haitians at a certain point, but uh, he stopped TPS for Haitians uh, also on his way out. However, the process in which these people get uh, documented to get TPS, temporary protected status, through this application is essentially just streamlining it. Like instead of doing paperwork, you get to, you get to literally do it through an application. It makes it easier, okay? When these guys claim that these uh, that like Kamala Harris just like waved a magic wand or whatever. It's Donald Trump has also waved that same magic wand, and the TPS application literally goes through and looks at prior records, like criminal records and whatnot. Okay, it's not you don't just like get to write a uh, TPS app and then you're like a criminal and then you basically are allowed into the country to do all the crimes that you want to do. There are background checks involved in this process. When Donald Trump is on uh, the, the application, he's shitting on his own Customs and Border Patrol. I remember you talking about this and everybody at the time were mad that they had phones but needed assistance. Yeah, also the process is like f***ed up to begin with. The, the application is really wonky and doesn't even work. You have to have strong borders. I had the best numbers we've ever had in the country. I think his response would be that they lie on the application and Kamala accepts them anyways. Yeah, it's not Kamala that accepts them. It's Customs and Border Patrol that accepts them. And it was four years ago. When I left, the week I left, we had the best numbers we've ever had. You've seen the famous chart. That's a famous chart that you know very well. You know probably as well as I do. Everyone knows it. And the reason that chart was on display was because that was the lowest point, and that was made by Border Patrol. That was the lowest number we've had for many, many decades, the lowest number. You need toughness. You need strength. You need uh, walls. And we had the walls. You know, I built hundreds of miles of walls. Uh, I was going to add another 200, which is much more than I said I was going to do, by the way. But it was working so well, I was going to add another 100. And then another 100 on top of that. 200 miles would have taken three to four weeks to install. It was already there, ready, ready to be put up. And they went out and sold it for five cents on the dollar. They didn't want it up. And that's when I realized they want open borders. These are open borders fanatics. If you have a wall and if you have good security, you can stop them from coming in very easily. Um, is it 88% of border drug apprehensions are American citizens? Yes, 88% of border drug apprehensions are American citizens. I do not know what percentage of the drugs overall that they're responsible for. But if 88% of border drug apprehensions are American citizens, uh, specifically... And uh, in terms of fentanyl, if undocumented immigrants are only responsible for 0.02% of the apprehensions for fentanyl, don't you think that it is statistically or mathematically unlikely for them to be responsible for the majority of fentanyl? Illicit fentanyl and drug smuggling at the U.S.-Mexico border, an overview, okay? Data indicates that drug seizures at the U.S.-Mexico border by pound seas are trending down. This is good news. Uh, the good news at a closer look can be misleading. Seizures of heavier, less potent drugs like marijuana are down, while illicit fentanyl, a drug 100 times more potent than morphine, are up significantly, 480% higher at the southern border in a fiscal year 2023. U.S. Customs and Border Patrol operations seized nearly 549,000 pounds of illicit drug substances nationwide on the southern border um fentanyl is up right like the amount of fentanyl this uh that's going across the border where is it where is it let's see yeah drug seizure statistics are down they're trending down i think it's trending down because of the types of drugs that are being seized because when drugs become legal or drugs become decriminalized heavily 
the black market, the, uh, the, the black market need for it goes down. That's another reason why uh, legalization is actually a burden for cartels. It's a pro-cartel policy not to legalize. Do they even have the, the thing in here? DHS, coordinated effort, port of entry. I mean, the, the facts that I use are directly from the Department of Homeland Security and Customs and Border Patrol. Fentanyl smuggled for U.S. citizens by U.S. citizens, uh, by U.S. citizens, for U.S. citizens, not asylum seekers. Um, <clears throat> an NPR Ipsos poll found that 39% of Americans, 60% of Republicans believe most of the fentanyl entering the U.S. is smuggled in by unauthorized migrants crossing the border illegally. That was back in 2022. Here, there are more recent numbers here. Um, U.S. citizens were 89% of convicted fentanyl trackers in 2022. Fentanyl smuggling is ultimately funded by U.S. consumers who pay for illicit opioids, nearly 99% of whom are U.S. citizens. In 2022, U.S. citizens were 89% of convicted fentanyl drug traffickers, 12 times greater than convictions of illegal immigrants of the same offense. In 2023, 93% of fentanyl seizures occurred at legal crossing points. This is DHS numbers, by the way. The, these are coming, like, Cato Institute is compiling these, but they're coming from drug seizure statistics from the Department of Homeland Security and the Customs and Border Patrol. This is from the CBP.gov website directly. This is what we look at when I talk about this kind of stuff, okay? They come in through legal crossing points or interior vehicle checkpoints, not on illegal migration routes, so U.S. citizens who are subject to less scrutiny when crossing legally are the best smugglers, Okay. The location of smuggling makes sense because hard drugs at ports of entry are at least 96% less likely to be stopped than people crossing illegally between them. At most, just 0.009% of the people arrested by Border Patrol for crossing illegally possessed any fentanyl whatsoever. Each individual busted for fentanyl by Border Patrol possessed on average half as much fentanyl as each person busted at ports of entry. So here, um, they have those numbers as well. They literally have less then obviously the people that are trafficking it through their cars okay understandable because it's much harder to smuggle drugs in the least reliable way possible through uh illegal border crossings when every single person is most likely going to get apprehended as they do the government exacerbated the problem by banning most legal uh cross-border traffic in 2020 and 2021 accelerating to switch to a fentanyl easiest to conceal drug during the travel restrictions, fentanyl seizures at ports quadrupled from fiscal year 2019 to 2021. Fentanyl went from a third of combined heroin and fentanyl seizures to over 90%. Annual deaths from fentanyl nearly doubled from 2019 to 2021 after the government banned most travel and asylum. It is monstrous that tens of thousands of people are dying unnecessarily every year from fentanyl. Fentanyl is primarily trafficked by U.S. citizens. U.S. Sentencing Commission publishes data on all federal convictions which includes demographic information on individuals convicted of fentanyl trafficking. Figure 1 shows the citizenship status of fentanyl traffickers from 2018 to 2022. Every year, U.S. citizens receive the most convictions by far. In 2022, U.S. citizens accounted for 89%. 89% of fentanyl trafficking convictions compared to just 8.9% for illegal immigrants. Look at that. Illegal non-citizens, 7.3%. Legal resident, 3.5%. U.S. citizen, 88.6%. Why is the question you might be asking yourself? Because who is less likely to be stopped? What is the easiest way to traffic drugs across the border? Is it easier to chop up a car and stash it in your vehicle, a vehicle that is operated by an American citizen who will be subject to less scrutiny at the regular ports of entry? Or is it, in your mind, easier to smuggle it with the least reliable method of delivery with thousands and thousands of uh, abuelas? crossing the goddamn border? If you think it's easier to smuggle fentanyl in your ass, then one must ask the question... Why isn't Amazon using this much more reliable delivery mechanism? Those fools, they use UPS, they use FedEx, they use these big trucks. They use these big trucks filled to the brim with boxes when they could have just been randomly giving it to random people to run around in. If you consider that to be the most efficient form of, of uh, logistics, then how can these multi-billion dollars uh, corporations not recognize that they're just losing out there? The answer is children. That's right. The answer is children. Children make the best drug mules, okay? The children both yearn for the mines and need uh, a job, a steady income, and they can get that from 
uh, the cartels, and they also are very, they're very good at trafficking drugs. They're real go-getters. That's how they do it. Anyway, <clears throat> indeed, this appears to be the case for even the most high-profile cases. Aaron Reichlin Melnick for the American Immigration Council analyzed every Customs and Border Protection press release mentioning fentanyl over a six-month period and found just 3% involved illegal immigrants. This means that the agency itself believes the most important smugglers are U.S. citizens. And yet, for some reason, nobody, nobody seems to be considering this reality. And the communication around this matters. That is precisely the reason why when you poll people in the American public, majorities of the American public think undocumented immigrants are responsible for the overwhelming majority of fentanyl deaths. Donald Trump lies about this fact all the time. If you are genuinely interested in solving the problem of fentanyl deaths, your focus should be on treating addiction as a disease and not as a crime, legalizing to the best of your ability, offering, you know, safe needle programs and things of that nature, while simultaneously communicating to the American public that fentanyl is not being trafficked by undocumented migrants and it's simply being used as a talking point. Oh, safe injection sites uh, are a really successful way to do it. Who's paying you to hide the truth? No, it's Canada. Okay, chatter. U.S. citizens account for most fentanyl trafficking convictions is not surprising given the location of fentanyl border seizures. In 2023, 93% of fentanyl border seizures occurred at legal border crossings and interior vehicle checkpoints, and 91% of drug seizures at checkpoints are from U.S. citizens, only 4% by potentially removable immigrants. In 2022, so far, the Border Patrol agents who were not at vehicle checkpoints accounted for just 7% of fentanyl seizures near the border. Of that 7%, CBP has testified the majority was seized from vehicle stops, again, usually from U.S. citizens. Since it is easier for U.S. citizens to cross legally than non-citizens, it makes sense for fentanyl producers to hire U.S. citizen smugglers, okay? He, when they say removable, potentially removable immigrants, they're talking about undocumented immigrants, not documented legal permanent residents, for example. The DEA reports that criminal organizations exploit major highway routes for transportation, and the most common method employed involves smuggling illicit drugs through U.S. ports of entry, in passenger vehicles, with concealed compartments, or commingled with legitimate goods on tractor trailers. It's so weird. It is so weird to me that such an obvious reality. We have this, like, we have this notion that this, like, Glaringly obvious reality is just not true. It is a major, in my opinion, a major failure of mainstream media and the Democratic Party that Americans still refuse to recognize, refuse to recognize the reality here, okay? What the truth is. American citizens are responsible for, let's say, 99% of the rapes and undocumented migrants are responsible for 1% of the rapes in the United States of America and you are running an anti campaign and you say we got to solve the anti we got to solve the crisis in this country by deporting migrants you are not a serious person you don't care about it at all you just want to deport migrants the people crossing illegally through the land border are trying to survive the geographical conditions that care about smuggling also aren't most illegal citizens people who flew and stayed yes the that's the other side of the story is that the majority of undocumented migrants that are currently on U.S. soil are visa overstayers, 52%. Anyway, how do we get here? This is uh, the charts that I get to every day. How is it that I have to repeat myself every single day? It's because no one else is doing it. It's because the Democratic Party is not doing it. The, uh, I assumed that they were going to throw it up. Would have taken them three weeks and you would have had a really secure border and they ended up really a lot of it they sold for five cents on the dollar think of that one and some of that governor greg abbott actually ended up with i believe to build his own wall now trende aragua that is a venezuelan gang that is compared to the mexican cartels a very vital okay i can't do this anymore we're gonna move on from this